<sighs> Look, y'all, man, I got a confession to make. I'm a complete fraud. I'm a hack. All this DC TV that I say I'm a fan of, and I have never actually really sat down to watch Smallville. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way. In my defense, the show came out when I was like seven or eight years old. And the only hero shows I was really watching at that point were things like Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, you know, the Justice League cartoon that was super dope, and things like reruns of the Gargoyles. Like, I remember a few episodes of Smallville coming on when I was a kid, but by the time I actually caught on to the show and saw what it really was, it was already about five or six seasons deep, so I never really ever sat down to try to even and catch up. So, 20 years later, I am going back and watching this show. Why? Because when I posted my CW video on TikTok and when I posted it on YouTube, everybody in the comments was saying stuff like, Smallville's the GOAT. They haven't done it right since Smallville. Smallville's hands down the best CW show ever made. So, I'm gonna test that theory. I'm gonna go back and watch and see if it lives up to the hype that all of y'all have been talking about. But this video isn't over the series as a whole. I just wanna talk about one episode and that is the pilot episode. This episode has some balls. So the first thing we see is Lex Luthor on a plane with his dad and his dad's being kind of a dick, you know, because all villains have daddy issues. It's like a comic book tool used to build up a villain and kind of draw parallels between them and the hero. It's a smart way to make you kind of feel for the villain or at least make you understand how they became the way they are. This insanely ballsy pilot episode shows us Lex Luthor, his dad, shows us Clark Kent's parents, shows us the town of Smallville and his vibe and a lot of other side characters, but it's a few minutes in and there's no sign of Clark. But when Clark finally touches down on that spaceship and those meteors start crashing down, that's when the big balls of this pilot episode really start swinging and they hold no punches. So these meteors start crashing down like crazy. They smash cars, buildings, and they even land directly on people. In this little show that presented itself like a drama in a quaint little town and a show about the wholesome upbringing of Clark Kent, we see people getting blown to smithereens by meteors. It literally shows people being slaughtered by space rocks in the first five minutes of the episode. The balls on this show are humongous. I get why a lot of y'all like it so much. Side note though, I thought it was pretty funny after all that destruction. You see Lex Luthor in the field laying under this little bitty like blaze of grass. And after all those moon rocks crashing down, after all that radiation, only thing that happens to him is like some mild hair loss. <laughs> <laughs> like i'm sure it was super dramatic back then but looking back in 2021 it's just kind of hard not to see that and laugh but speaking of lex luther man making him and clark tied to each other from such a young age could have gone horribly wrong Honestly, I usually hate when comics or TV shows do this. Like in Batman 89 when they decided to make Joker be the one who actually killed Bruce's parents instead of Joe Chill. I love Jack Nicholson's performance in that movie, but I really hate that stupid connection. It really ruined the movie for me. But it actually worked between Lex and Clark here. And the next thing I was really impressed with is how the show uses subtle hints, side characters, and Easter eggs to kind of build tension. And before I get into that topic of tension, man, I just want to say shout out and thank you to all the new subscribers. After that CW video, the channel's been kind of going crazy. It's a little wild and a lot to keep up with. I try to make sure I respond and comment to everybody, especially if your comment is positive or valid and not just coming to drop some hate for no reason. And if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, make sure you go ahead and hit that sub button and that like if you're liking what you see so far. But yeah, man, let's go ahead and talk about the tension in this show. There's a lot of different points of tension in this first episode, one being the relationship between Lex and Clark. They make it pretty clear that they're gonna have them be friends, at least for the early part of the series. The moments they have on screen together are pretty endearing. Lex is like this spoiled rich kid who has gotten everything he ever wanted. Clark is this middle-class form boy from an extremely modest family. And you know in any other show, they would probably be the best of friends, but we know what we know. We know that Lex and Clark will eventually become mortal enemies. It kind of makes it sad because the start to their friendship is pretty wholesome for the most part. There's added tension from Chloe snooping around and 
pretty much taken note of all the weird things that happen in Smallville. Anyone who's ever watched a TV show ever knows that's definitely going to come into play later in the season. And I honestly can't wait for other people in the series to find out that Clark has powers. I'm kind of wondering and excited to see how different characters are going to react to him revealing himself or finding out about him. One thing I didn't remember being a part of this show was the addition that Clark's arrival on Earth didn't just awake his powers, but the radiation also gave a lot of others in the vicinity powers as well. And that makes me have a crap ton of questions, like does Lex Luthor get powers in this show? I really hope they do not give Lex powers. Things are also getting tense between Clark and his dad. Like Clark just wants to be normal while all these abnormal things keep happening to him. He just wants to get girls and play football, you know, high school stuff. Everything that happens in this pilot episode is pretty much leading up to that moment, that conversation. You know that you're not from around here conversation that pretty much has to happen in every iteration of Superman. I haven't watched a full show or even the first season's entirety yet, but so far I do like how they've been able to characterize some of the people that they've shown me so far. I think that's something that this show has kind of a leg up on the modern day superhero shows on the CW. They're not very good at characterization and when they do do it, it's almost a little bit too late. Like in this show, I know who Chloe is, I know who she's gonna be, and I can tell how she'll be integral to the plot of the season. And I also know who Lex is. He seems like a cool guy, but they show his darkness and his recklessness too. And you can tell the main reason he wants to be friends with Clark is simply because he's intrigued by him. He knows there's more to Clark than meets the eye and that has his intrigue level super high. I can also tell who Lana Lang is and her place in the show and what she's going to mean to Clark later on. And in just a few minutes of natural dialogue, we not only get Jonathan Kent's characterization, but we also get the role he plays in Clark's life and the values that he instills in him. I've seen that conversation happen in almost every version of a Superman story, but I think it was done the best here. I will say as far as characterization goes, the mom didn't get much characterization in this pilot episode. And also there's a few characters that just kind of fall in that stock character pile for me, like the mean jock who's just mean because he's mean and he's a jock and you know, jocks are mean. Hopefully that's not a theme that plays out throughout the entirety of the show, but in this show's defense, it is juggling a lot of characters in this pilot episode and it's pretty much just throwing them at you back to back to back to back to back. Like, okay, here's the characters, here's the town, now let's get into the story. And I kind of like that. Besides that, the only other nitpick that I really have is there's a lot of things that happen in this show that seem to just happen by coincidence or happenstance. And I'll get into that a little bit more when I do my actual review of the first season, but I'll just keep it at that for now. But yeah, that's really it as far as nitpicks go and everything else is really out of its control. It's just things that happen because of when it was made. Like I expected the action scenes and special effects not to age very well. I expected the sad music montages that run rampant throughout this first episode. It's just one of those things that shows did in that time, you know? But besides just looking and feeling very 2001, I really did enjoy this show. It has this unique kind of lightning in the bottle charm to it. And I can see the DNA of this show in a lot of shows that would come out in the future on the CW in the Arrowverse. And I mean that some in very, very good ways and some not so much. But once again, I will get into all that when I do my season one review of this show. But anyways, without spoiling anything for me, let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite season of Smallville? Do you guys like this show? Do you think it is the best CW show? If you stuck it out to the end of the video, make sure you like and subscribe if you're not already. I do my best to drop content every one or two weeks and nine times out of 10, it is going to be movie or TV related. And nine times out of 10, it'll also be about superheroes and comic book characters in these movies and TV shows. But anyways, y'all, this your boy, Eddie Knight. Thanks for all the new subs, man. I'm out.